Welcome to session two of the Pennsylvania FFA State Convention. Yesterday, we heard from some influential leaders in both our state government as well as from the national FFA organization. We introduced our state officer candidates and celebrated our past state officers. Today, we will hear from a great advocate from the national FFA organization. We will recognize our state agri-science fair and proficiency award winners and we will introduce our state officers and administrators. So, let's get started. <laughs> to kick off our session today, we have a California native who loves the FFA and can speak both English and Spanish in the same sentence. Joining us today is no stranger to the national FFA organization. This individual has taken full advantage of his time in the FFA served as the 2019 to 2020 California FFA State Sentinel, and is currently serving as your National FFA Western Region Vice President. Please join me in welcoming David Lopez. Hola a todos, me da mucho gusto estar aquí con ustedes celebrando su asociación y todo lo que han cumplido el año pasado. My name is David Lopez, and I'm currently serving as the National FFA Western Region Vice President and I couldn't be more excited to help celebrate Pennsylvania S FFA Association as we celebrate the great work we've accomplished as an association this past year, despite the challenges and just the craziness going on around us this past year. You know, as I think a little bit about state conventions, I think back to my home state one, and I'm reminded of a couple of descriptions, such as good laughs, family, a sense of community, hard work, dedication, generations, growth, discomfort, and the list keeps going. Similarly, we too might have a certain description to describe Pennsylvania FFA. My question for all of us is why? Why is it that we associate our association with these words? And friends, it's simple. It's because of experiences we've had or stories shared with one another. As I reflect a little bit about stories that embody what hard work looks like for me and represent our association and organization, I think back to this bandana. When I look at it, I am reminded of many of the same descriptions as I said before. For instance, the sense of family I felt when spirit days on campus, we all wore the same thing. Or the good laughs I shared with friends when playing around with this bandana during class. Even that amount of discomfort I feel when I have to wipe yet another ranch condiment stain on my official dress. But the most impactful story of them all was towards the end of my high school career. As I look at it, I'm reminded of one of the most unforgettable summers of my life. You see, I come from the Imperial Valley, which if we've never been to Southern California, more specifically the Imperial County, I recommend we keep it that way. It's a whopping 127 degrees. It's almost as hot as those middle school dances when the Cupid Shuffle comes on and everyone starts rushing through the middle, to the middle of the stage. And then all of a sudden starts going to the right, to the right, and then the left, and then the left, and then you know how it goes. But in all seriousness, our summers are so intense that you don't want to step outside unless you absolutely have to. However, a community that never fails to show up even on the hardest days, is our farm labor community. Growing up in a predominantly agricultural area, I grew up seeing hardworking men and women harvesting the endless produce we see at our grocery stores. From the beautiful romaine lettuce with water dripping down its sides, to the stiff but delicious broccoli, and even the ugly on the outside, but beautiful on the inside onion. I've seen it all. However, it wasn't until the summer of 2019 that I really understood the work it entailed that in order for us to enjoy these vegetables and produce. You see, as I was getting ready to graduate, I figured it was probably time for me to help it a little bit more. So I decided to do something I never envisioned myself doing. That's right, folks. David got a job at the Onion Shed. For the longest time, I wondered what kind of person it took to work at an establishment like this one. It wasn't glamorous, and a lot of the people who were, who were around me spoke very, not, not so highly about the work that took place here. They saw it as beneath them. 
But if there's anything I've learned in my short 20 years of life is that these people are some of the best people to spend your time with as they are a perfect example of what hard work looks like. This became so evident my first day at the job at the Onion Shed. As I began my first shift of my first big boy job, I took a mental headshot of the room and this is what it looked like. Let's close our eyes. You see men hoisting 50 pound bags of onions from right to left. Older women, older women sorting through onions, sifting out the bad ones consumers wouldn't want. Everyone sweating profusely what seemed to be gallons of sweat. But wait a minute, an image that captivated my attention the most was the sense of community I witnessed. The laughs shared with people as they made the most out of their day's work. As we open our eyes, I'm quickly transported back into that very moment when I opened my eyes and realized that I was not cut out for this job. My hands bleeding, my back sweating, my tears seemed to be dropping endless drops of water. And I must have had a real look of desperation on my face because out of nowhere, comes a sweet, sweet, tender woman who as a matter of fact reminded me a lot of my abuelita, my grandmother, says, Hola mijo, como estas? Hi son, how you doing? I quickly shrug my shoulders, unclench my throat, hold back the tears in my eyes and say, I can't fathom how people do this job so easily and for such a long period of time. She quickly giggled and said, Para personas como yo, no hay otra oportunidades. Pero para personas como tú, las oportunidades son infinitas. Pero para la próxima, vente un poquito más temprano para que no tengas tanto calor. She said, For me, this is all that I can, I can do. But for you, the opportunities are endless. However, next time come a little bit earlier so you don't get such a hot and warm season. As she finishes that statement, she proceeds to put her hand in her pocket, pulling out a bandana, pointing it to my forehead, giving me the sweetest, most warm smile, and saying, Si sí, se puede. Now y'all, having a bandana like this at a place like that one is fundamental for a day's work. It's almost as important as having water after a long workout or having food for our livestock projects. It's essential. But the craziest part for me was understanding that a complete stranger was willing to give what little they had to a stranger like myself. And it made me ask this question, how many times have I failed to recognize when people pass forward their bandana? And by that, I don't literally mean a bandana, but instead, small acts of kindness which I've failed to recognize. Perhaps we will too with some thought. Who has passed their bandana forward to you? In FFA, we talk about living to serve and stepping up as leaders at all times. But I want us to think about this question. How many of us appreciate the little things people do for us? Or better yet, how do we pay it forward for others? How do we pass our bandana? I know I've struggled with this quite often, but it's something that as leaders we need to do and we need to do more often. And I am by no means an expert at this, but I've come to understand there's a three-step process which allows us to make this happen. And it ultimately boils down to this. Own up, open up, and show up. Own up, open up, and show up. When I think about this idea of owning up, it's owning up to all that we are. The people, the experiences, the culture, the stories that have led us to the point in which we are right now. And being brave enough to share that with the people around us. There's a powerful quote by Brene Brown that says, Courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. What a powerful statement. I wonder how many of us have the courage to own up to all that we are 
in any capacity. Alternatively, how many of us are too afraid to own all that we are out of a fear of rejection? I know I am. I know the person next to you might. I know someone in your life does. However, how can we own up to all that we are? Because when we don't, we miss out on all these connections which we are able to have with the people who relate to us. I've come to really reflect of the role I get to partake in this year, serving on the largest student led organization as one of the six elected individuals from across the country. And think about where it started for me. I grew up in a small rural town of 6,000. My parents are immigrants and divorced. I never envisioned a kid like me could end up with a jacket like this one. You see, when I go home, I don't open a, ja a closet and see a bunch of jackets lining up with family legacies or come from an agriculture background that's so rich that has been around for decades. So I did what I had to do and started being this cookie cutter version of FFA member to succeed because I was ashamed to be different than those around me. But it's because of people like Mrs. Cox, my mother, other, other individuals, that I little by little start owning all that I am. And I'm often so envious of those who do it so easily. And today I'm excited to talk about my friend Deontre, who is just awesome at this, from Willits FFA. I got to meet Deontre as a state officer in California and very quickly realized Deontre was a good soul. Caring, thoughtful, considerate, driven, passionate, motivated, forward thinking. This year, Deontre decided to run for region office. And as I saw, first of all, that he had been slated, two, thought went through, two thoughts went through my head. The first one, that's my homeboy, let's go. It's time to take the dub. And the second one, what an inspiration he will be to other people of color, not only in the North Coast, everywhere. The coolest thing about DeAndre is knowing him, he owned up all that he was in those interviews and in the questions. His stories, his laugh, everything that he had to bring to this organization, he owned up to. And DeAndre may not recognize this, but by him doing so, he's allowed for other people who may have been too nervous to try to see a leader within themselves. DeAndre passes his bandana forward by owning up. And we too need to do that in order to move on to our second step, which is open up. When I think of this idea, my mind goes to opening up the way we think. In FFA and agriculture, we have a bunch of norms or traditions in which ways in which we have done things, which I'll be the first to say, doing things the old fashioned way can be a good thing. However, we must open up our minds to think that not everyone comes from the same traditions or backgrounds as we do. Someone that has enabled me to think about this topic a little bit more is none other than Mr. White. Mr. White began teaching at Gall High School over 12 years ago and heading into his first year, his skin color matched his last name and the school which he'd be teaching at was predominantly students of color. However, being the game changer he is, Mr. White wasn't gonna let that stop him from doing the good work and connecting with the students. So he quickly understood that Gal FFA had some work to be done in order for students to find comfort in being a part of the program, but also feel like they had a seat at that table. He understood that there was a lot of growth that had to occur and some of it included him. He spent time focusing on students who come from traditional agriculture backgrounds but he also found it in his heart to add a little more extra and more effort to those students who did it. Students such as first generation Americans, those who thought differently than him, those who looked differently than him, and so many others. This world is much better because of people like Mr. White, and I believe we too can do what he does. Bring this conversation into any part work and any conversation we're a part of sports, academics, extracurriculars, anything. And perhaps we do this already with our younger siblings helping paint the picture. Or maybe it's with a complete stranger walking them to our group in which they typically wouldn't succeed in. 
These are the small but impactful ways in which we open up and pass our bandana forward. I want us to go ahead and think about someone in our lives who we can open up to. Someone we can make feel like that they have a sense of belonging. And now that we have that head and that name in mind, we've arrived to our final destination to finally show up. This year has been anything but normal. The conversations about things being canceled, postponed, or up in the air have been endless. But something that has been endless as well is the conversations our ag educators have had on how we make the first year FFA members experience just as good as the last one. And wherever we are right now, I'd actually like us to take a moment and just give our teachers a big round of applause. I've seen these conversations with people like Ms. Campbell from Utah, Mr. Funk from Nebraska, Ms. Luxon from California, Ms. Davis from Georgia. I actually got to tour um, the American Poultry Association with Ms. Davis in her class uh, from Arabia Mountain. And then in there, you saw how she showed up was truly inspiring. One of her students mentioned, I hope to be as, uh, as strong and fearless as Ms. Davis one day, standing up and showing up for everything I believe in. It was right then and then that I knew that Ms. Davis showed up and made sure that her students had such an equal opportunity as those in the corner. She created a safe place for her students to feel a sense of belonging. And we too can do what Miss Davis does. For us, it doesn't have to be this grand gesture. For us, it's as simple as turning on our Zoom screens during the events. It's being a listening ear to a friend. It's looking at things through a different perspective when someone who doesn't think the same way as we do talks to us. These are the small but impactful ways in which we show up and pass our bandanas forward. As I reflected my time at the Onion Shed, I know the people who I got to work with never thought much of it and never envisioned it make such an impact in my life. However, I now understand the value of hard work and want to do something in my life occasion that allows me to pay it forward for individuals like them every single day. I will never forget the moments in which I forgot a bandana, but most importantly, I will never forget the moments when someone was willing to lend me one of theirs. And because of that, I own up, open up, and show up as much as I can. And I hope you will too. Let's go ahead and take out our cell phones really quick. And before our time together is over, I'd like us to look up NFFA underscore WVP on Instagram. So once again, NFFA underscore WVP. And shoot me a DM. How will you own up, open up, and show up for the people around you? I believe in you all. Thank you so much for having me at y'all's convention. I can't wait to continue celebrating the great work. And with that in mind, y'all, have a great rest of your time. David, thank you for all of your words of encouragement. You surely have served the Blue Jacket well this year and can definitely bust a move. We cannot wait to see how the rest of your service goes in hopes that it is full of tons of amazing moments. Pennsylvania FFA, let's give a round of applause for our National FFA Western Region Vice President, David Lopez. Each year at the Pennsylvania Farm Show, FFA members showcase their agri-science fair projects. Although the presentation looked a little bit different this year, our FFA members did not disappoint. Spanning in areas of social systems to animal systems, we had a very diverse group of members compete this year. The AgriScience Fair focuses on members going into agricultural expertise with real world and hands-on experiences, using scientific principles and emerging technologies to solve problems in food, natural resources, and agriculture. Pennsylvania FFA, we are proud to present to you our 2021 AgriScience Fair winners. Introducing the 2021 State AgriScience Fair winners. In the area of Food Products and Processing Systems Division 3, Jaden Williams from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. 
in the area of Food Products and Processing Systems, Division 4. Sage Callahan and Courtney Britton from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Food Products and Processing Systems, Division 5. Aaron Hoy from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. In the area of Food Products and Processing Systems, Division 6. Lindsay Fleck and Lauren Fleck from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. In the area of Plant Systems Division 3, Katie Ewing from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. In the area of Plant Systems Division 4, Lisa Kesselring and Lydia Kern from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Plant Systems Division 5, Kylie Moyer from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Power, Structural, and Technical Systems Division 3, Colin Werner from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Power, Structural, and Technical Systems Division 4, Kate Nye and Haley Hoyt from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Environmental Services and Natural Resource Systems Division 4, Nico Nemo and Kyle Corpel from the Greenwood FFA Chapter. In the area of Environmental Services and Natural Resource Systems Division 5, Aaron Horak from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Animal Systems Division 3, Alex Schock from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. In the area of Animal Systems Division 4, Alyssa Rodriguez and Haley Whitehead from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Animal Systems Division 5, Celia Wirth from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Social Systems Division 4, Aisha Namaga and Paris Jones from the Conrad Weiser FFA Chapter. In the area of Social Systems Division 5, Carly Diebold from the Tyrone FFA Chapter. Congratulations to each of our Agricultural Science Fair winners. Your passion for the agricultural industry and science shine through each of your projects. We know that each of you have bright futures ahead of you and are excited to see what is in store. Our agriculture education programs and FFA chapters at our home high schools would not be possible without the strong support from our school's administrators. These are the leaders who have secured opportunities over the years for us in our home high schools. FFA members, when you get the chance, be sure to say thank you to the administrators at your home high schools. At this time, we would like to introduce you to the leaders at our home high schools. Pennsylvania FFA, I am proud to introduce you to the Southern Huntington County High School's very best and coolest administrators and supporters of the FFA chapter. My superintendent, Mr. Dwayne Northcraft, my principal, Mr. Clint Heath, my guidance counselors, Mr. Ryan Wilt and Mrs. Fisher, my English teachers, Mr. Steve Keim and Mrs. Jessica Keim, and my biology teacher, Mrs. Sarah McMath. The administration and support staff at Central Columbia High School strive to further the premier leadership, personal growth, and career success of each and every one of their students. I am proud to recognize Superintendent Jeff Groshek, Principal Adam Comstock, Assistant Principal Chris Snyder, Guidance Counselors Jason Bartholomew and Alyssa Fairchild, and English teacher Matthew Swinehart. The Agricultural Education Program at Lampeter Strasburg High School wouldn't be the same without the continued support from our administration. It is my honor to introduce to you Dr. Kevin Peart, Superintendent, Dr. Andrew Godfrey, Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Benjamin Feeney, Principal, Dr. Scott Rimmer and Dr. Michelle Westfall, Assistant Principals, and my guidance counselor, Claudine. 
Pennsylvania FFA, I am proud to present to you some of my greatest supporters. From the Canton Area Junior Senior High School, my administrative and support staff. My superintendent, Dr. Eric Briggs. Past principal, Mr. Craig Coleman. Current principal, Mr. Donnie Jacopetti. My guidance counselor, Mrs. Jessica Watson. My dean of students, Mr. Don Cron. And some science teachers, Ms. Chelsea Swartz, Mr. Casey Aylesworth, Mr. John Bowman, Mr. Mason Tate, and one of my greatest supporters, Mrs. Brandy McRoberts. The administrators and staff at the Ambo Cleona High School serve as the backbone of the Little Dutchman FFA chapter as they always offer their continuous support. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Krista Antonis, Superintendent, Ms. Laurie Bowersox, Principal, Mr. Kevin Brindle, Assistant Principal, Mr. Thomas Long, Assistant Principal and Athletic Director, Mr. Matthew Gross, Guidance Counselor, and Mr. Matthew Bishop, Science Teacher and Continuous Support to FFA members. Thank you for all that you do for our FFA members and their agricultural education. I'm here to proudly introduce my administration and staff from the Everett Area High School and Bedford CTC. Dr. Danny Webb, Superintendent. Mr. Mark Bullman, Administrative Director. Mrs. Allison Mountain, Guidance Counselor. Mr. Sam Schuss, Guidance Counselor. Dr. Dina Mobis. Mr. James Markle. Mrs. Rhonda Rhodes, and Mr. William Imler. From Elizabethtown Area High School, I would like to recognize Michelle Balliette, Superintendent, Maura Hobson, Principal, Robert Crick, Assistant Principal, Jason Potts, Assistant Principal, and Kelly Gillette, the best guidance counselor, for their faithful and generous support of the Elizabethtown FFA program. I'm truly thankful for all that you do. Behind every successful FFA chapter is a supportive administration. To all the administrators who faithfully support the FFA programs across the state, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do to help develop the lives of our students. This next group of individuals have outstanding supervised agricultural experience projects. These Rockstar FFA members are our state proficiency winners. A state proficiency award is given to students who have developed valuable skills they can use in their future career through their SAE project. Students can compete in awards in approximately 50 areas. From agricultural production to vegetable production, the opportunities are endless. Please join me in congratulating our state proficiency winners who will be representing Pennsylvania at the National FFA Convention in October. And the state winner in Ag Sales Placement is Sarah Bleacher from the Manor FFA Chapter. Sarah works at Pineview Dairy. She's involved in handling money and food products and other tasks with her main job being running the cash register and serving ice cream. She is currently in the process of completing her food safety course to becoming a shift manager and because of her strong work ethic, has been promoted to helping in the kitchen to make food products to sell. Congratulations, Sarah. The state winner in Ag Services is Carly Cleveland from the West Perry FFA chapter. Carly works at McMillan Brothers, which is a farm and equipment family business. She's involved in cleaning of the equipment and the shop and operating equipment on the farm in addition to other miscellaneous tasks that have taught her responsibility, communication, and dependability. Congratulations, Carly. The state winner in Ag Research Animal category is Amanda Hamilton from the Cumberland Valley FFA chapter. Amanda's SAE involves caring for horses in her community through grooming and proper care while studying the effects horses have on humans' mental health. She is solely responsible for caring for the horses used in her research and has worked with experts in her community such as veterinarians to gain more information on her topic. Congratulations, Amanda. The state winner in Ag Research Integrated is Garen Hoy from the Tyrone FFA chapter. 
Garen's research involves eliminating the risk of E. coli and salmonella contamination in lettuce by creating his own auger and growing these bacteria in petri dishes. He's discovered vegetable washes found in the store aren't effective in ridding foods of these bacteria, but rather there are home remedies that work much better. Congratulations, Garen. The state winner in beef production entrepreneurship is Joseph Vandergrip from the Grand Canyon FFA chapter. Joseph owns and operates a cow-calf operation that had started in 2017 where he has heifers, bred cows, a bull, and calves born each year. He has started to raise his own replacement heifers and his market steers to neighbors and friends. He mentors other FFA members with their projects as well. Congratulations, Joseph! The state winner in beef production placement is Harrison Boaz from the Greenwood FFA chapter. Harrison is a farmhand from the Roald Farms where he is responsible for beef cattle care and field work in exchange for the farm housing his beef cattle. He feeds the cattle, unloads the silo, plants corn, and utilizes the grain drill. This year, he made his own hay using equipment he restored. Congratulations, Harrison! The state winner in dairy production entrepreneurship is Courtney Martin from the Headwaters FFA chapter. Courtney owns a few dairy animals of her own while also working on her family's 60 head dairy operation to include milking, feeding calves, scraping the barn, cleaning, fitting, and training her cows for show. You may also find her operating the equipment on the farm. Congratulations, Courtney. Your state winner in dairy production placement is Katarina Kaufman of the Blue Geniana FFA chapter. Katarina works on her family's dam dairy farm, Tom Glow Farm, in exchange to cover her own dairy cow expenses. She is actively involved in milking, vaccinating, dehorning, treating, and prepping cows for transport. She recognizes and loves the family effort involved in feeding calves, sorting heifers, and bedding pens. Congratulations, Katarina. Your state winner, winner in diversified agriculture production is Ella Brummer from the Greenwood FFA chapter. Ella's SAE is paid employment on her family's farm where she cares for 60 Angus beef cows, 40 Berkshire sows, 120 crossbred ewes, and 75 acres of vegetables. She's involved in working her family's roadside market, market picking vegetables, cleaning pens, feeding cows, and lambing ewes. Congratulations, Ella! Your state winner in diversified horticulture is Morgan Harnish of the Manor FFA chapter. Morgan works at Funks Riverview Greenhouse, where she has learned to grow plants in the greenhouse, transplant seeds, and riverside blooms, in which she learned about floral design. Also working in hydroponic greenhouse, she's involved in growing lettuce and marketing to, to customers. Congratulations, Morgan. Your state winner in diversified livestock production is Nina Coolidge of the Grand Canyon FFA chapter. Nina's SAE involves raising, showing, and selling market steers, sheep, and swine for her county fair and swine for the Pennsylvania Farm Show, while also breeding her own swine for meat. She is responsible for feeding, watering, exercising, cleaning pens, and the farrowing of her animals. Congratulations, Nina! Your state winner in environmental science is Lauren Brott of the Cumberland Valley FFA chapter. Lauren serves on the Pennsylvania Student Leadership Council of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, where she is involved in organizing and implementing her own riparian buffer restoration project and planting in addition to working closely with PA legislators to dedicate the state's amphibian. Congratulations, Lauren. Your state winner in equine science placement is Jesslyn Krebs from the Garden Spot FFA chapter. Jesslyn assists with training standard bred horses for harness racing at Jim Jeff Training Stables. She is involved in jogging the horses for exercise, harnessing them to the sulky cart for practice evaluations, brings the horses in from the pasture, and cleans stalls. Congratulations, Jesslyn. Your state winner in fruit production is Parker Barnes of the Chambersburg FFA chapter. Parker works at Schatzer's Orchard where he helps to sort, carry, and pack a variety of fruit for sale. He operates the forklift to restock the store, creates apples for wholesalers, and helps in the growing season to prune trees. Congratulations, Parker. Your state winner in goat production is Abigail Shuck of the Myersdale FFA chapter. Abby's SAE involves raising and showing around 13 alpine dairy goats. With the milk she receives from the goats, she makes and sells lotion, 
soap, lip balms, and other products. She is responsible for the daily care of these animals, as well as hoof trimming, biannual blood work, milking, and kidding. Congratulations, Abby. Your state winner in sheep production is Chad Hoover of the McGuffey FFA chapter. Chad owns 24 Oxford and Merino sheep that he breeds for lambs in January of each year. He is responsible for monitoring the sheep on pasture, daily feeding and watering, caring for newborn lambs by tagging, doxing, and vaccinating them, and weaning the lambs when ready. He also purchases and shows market lambs at his county fair. Congratulations, Chad. Your state winner in small animal production is Alexis Bannock of the Grand Canyon FFA chapter. Alexis owns 20 New Zealand and Himalayan rabbits that she raises and breeds for about five shows per year and then for sale. She is responsible for feeding, watering, diagnosing problems in her rabbits, trimming nails, and grooming as well. Congratulations, Alexis. Your state winner in specialty animal production is Colette Hoffman of the Midwest FFA chapter. Colette raises Lady Amherst pheasants. She begins breeding her pheasants in May and the season concludes in the fall, with the eggs taking 24 days to hatch and females having 6 to 12 eggs per year. With these birds, Colette hopes to keep breeding pheasants while mentoring others through the process. Congratulations, Colette! Your state winner in swine production is Faith Burkholder of the Elizabethtown FFA chapter. Each year, Faith raises and exhibits two crossbred market hogs at the local fairs and farm shows. Her project requires daily care of her show pigs and training them for show. She enjoys working with younger members and sharing her passion for livestock with her community. Congratulations, Faith. Your state winner in vegetable production is Emma O'Toole of the West Perry FFA chapter. Emma's SAE consists of two raised bed gardens that she utilizes for vegetable production. She harvests peppers, tomatoes, lettuce, cabbage, beans, and many, many more. She spends her time planting, watering, weeding, and harvesting. Congratulations, Emma. Congratulations to all of our State Proficiency Award winners. Your hard work and dedication is a testament to your passion for agriculture and your chosen project, and we wish you the best of luck at the national level. That concludes the second session of the 92nd State Convention, but be sure to come back for session three as we recognize even more of our amazing FFA members and supporters. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for session three.